We've we've had the pager attacks. We've had the you know severe bombing in, in southern Lebanon that killed over 600 people, and now we've had this massive bombing within the capital city Beirut. But we still have seen very little from Hezbollah. What what is what's going on? What what, yeah. do, you, what do you see as the current state of the war right now? <clears throat> well, I don't think it's fair to say uh, we've seen very little. They've been <clears throat> some unprecedented you know rocket and missile attacks on northern mm-hmm. Israel. Um, and it's not clear, you know, again, directed at military facilities. And they've done some damage. I mean, you know, I've seen videos, explosions of the base, you know, the, um, and I, I don't know how severe the damage is, but it's something, you know, and, and they have, um, you know, we'll, we'll see, uh, the, you know, the Iron Dome has been working hard to, to shoot down these these Katusha rockets, and I guess they, they shoot down a, a fairly large percentage of them. But I suspect that there are a lot more Katusha rockets than there are Iron Dome interceptors. And at some point, the, the you know the Iron Dome is going to run out of interceptors, and the other missile systems will as well. And then we'll see what happens. And it and we also hear again that um, Hezbollah is has more advanced missiles. We haven't. What we've seen, okay, there was one, I think, called a Qadri missile that actually was fired at Tel Aviv. It was intercepted by, I think, a, an arrow interceptor uh, fired by the Israelis. Uh, but in general, we've seen these Katusha rockets, and then there's something, a, a, kind of a, a step above them, the, the, the Fadi 1, Fadi 2. We've seen some of those. Um, but there's supposed to be, you know, some truly advanced ones, and they, the, the Hezbollah hasn't uh, resorted to those yet. They are... You know, they are responding, but it, the truth is that in the air war, you know, they, they are greatly outmatched. Um, you know, they can do something. You know, obviously they can they can uh, prevent um, Netanyahu from obtaining his, his objective of returning uh, the, the, the residents of northern Israel to their homes. Um, because, you know, the, the reason for for evacuating them was the the, the rocket attacks. Um, and now these rocket attacks have increased in scale and they had no sign, no sign of letting up. Um, so clearly so far he's failing in, to achieve this objective. But well, what, what do you think about just the way that Israel's conducting this war? Do you think that it's been effective at all in disarming, disabling, subduing Hezbollah uh, in the region well, or... Well, they, they clearly have, you know, been very successful in killing a number of uh, Hezbollah commanders. And actually, they've, they've I'm so successful that you have to suspect that that um, Hezbollah's communication system has been compromised in some way. You know, because I, I, we, we don't know what's happened to Nasrallah. You know, we don't know if he survived or not, but he... Just I think yesterday or the day before, they took out the head of the you know the drone department, and a couple of days before that, they took out the entire uh, um, command staff for the for an elite kind of a special forces unit. Um, they've done a lot of damage. They've really they've they've to the command structure of of Hezbollah, um, but that doesn't destroy Hezbollah. I think it can create momentary chaos but my understanding is Hezbollah was prepared for this it's something that they they understand that their leaders what might be martyred which is you know the term that they use um and they prepare for it you know they have replacements so each, each leader is supposed to groom you know a successor and so there's somebody there that's ready to step into his shoes um you know I and maybe in the short run that will create some confusion but um, I, I don't think that it's done, you know, long-term damage to Hezbollah. And even if Nasrallah is killed, I think what it probably would do that whoever replaces them is probably likely to be less of a moderate and probably more willing to, you know, take the to um, take the fight to the Israelis. Um, and that to that may be, in fact, what Netanyahu wants. I mean, you see that Israel has a history of taking out moderates. They don't want moderates. They want. They don't want a diplomatic solution. You know, they they want uh, military victory, and they want to provoke their 
um, their enemies into, you know, into war. Yeah, but the, the idea of a military victory just seems impossible to me unless you mm -hmm. kill everybody, which I mean, yeah. maybe they, that's what they want to do, but they can't get away with that, right? I mean, they haven't been able to do it in Gaza. I mean, there's reports of maybe up to 25% of the population now have died. You know, this number that's been stuck at 40,000. See, we, we had the, uh, right. well, yeah, that's, the Lancet that's Medical clearly, Journal, right, right, saying over yeah. 200,000. So, right. Um, but, but anyways, the, the you know that they, they, he can't achieve a military victory so i just i don't i don't know how this is going to play out exactly but you, you will have a lot of death and destruction mm -hmm. but there's no way that netanyahu will be able to achieve his goals right i yeah, mean i yeah i don't see how he can do it i mean uh, first of all he can't defeat he can uh, he cannot defeat hezbollah from the air as that seems clear he can wreak all kinds of devastation you know he can leave um uh, southern Lebanon and smoking ruins. And again, that's going to just increase the hatred uh, for Israel around the world. And it potentially will turn away some of those supporters, you know, will some of those governments that have supported Israel may cease to support him after this attack on Lebanon. Um, if it continues the way it has, it's been very bloody so far. Um, he can't do it from the air. And because again, Hezbollah is, is a ground force and they're they're well entrenched in southern Lebanon. They're underground in many cases. You know, again, um, everybody now you know acknowledges that Hamas had a, has a very sophisticated system of tunnels in Gaza, and and Hezbollah has one too. But it's got to be much, you know, that much larger, that much more advanced, because they just had many more resources. It's amazing that Hamas did what it did. You know, being like. This is a very small strip of land under siege, but yet they managed to create this underground network. Now, uh, Hezbollah has many, many advantages that Hamas does not have. One is that, okay, they, you know, instead of in inhabiting a very small strip of land, flat strip of land, you know, under entirely surrounded by uh, by Israel, you know, it, um, I think you can say that even about the Rafik crossing i mean they have they have control over that crossing too um uh, hezbollah you know controls a lot more land it's mountainous and it's it's not surrounded by israel you know they have the uh, you know they have uh you know uh um, there are lines of communication or, you know, logistical lines, supply lines to, to northern Lebanon and to Syria. And um, and so, so, you know, the, the, the you look at the tremendous disadvantage that Hamas was has been and yet they've managed to hold on. Yet they, they still have not been, um, you know, de defeated by Israel. Um, Hezbollah, you know, so all those. Hezbollah has so many advantages. There's just no way. If, if if Israel could not could not defeat Hamas, it could not wipe them out. You know what chance do they have against Hezbollah? They just don't. You know, and also the, simply the you know Hezbollah has numbers has a much larger army than Hamas ever had, and uh, they they can't do it. They, you know the kind of force they've talked about. You know, I think recently a couple more brigades were moved to the border, but they don't have nearly the numbers. To take on them, even if they had the numbers, it would be a very difficult fight, and they just it simply doesn't add up. When you look at you know the the balance of forces on the ground, Israel just does not have the forces to take southern Lebanon. They don't. Um, they can't. Okay, they can they can rule the air, but they can't win from the air. They can attempt a ground invasion, but it will fail. Uh, so, and I, I think that the IDF and um, um, Netanyahu understand this, but the bet Netanyahu's bet again is that he well he'll go in there maybe knowing that he's going to get into trouble, but he'll get into trouble and then the the U.S. will come riding to his rescue. So, so that's the only way I can explain it. You know? So you you think a, a ground invasion is still coming, or should we expect a lot more of these kind of bombing campaigns from the IDF and just rocket yeah. fire, just sort of a yeah. Um, because yeah, it's hard to Mate say. You know, from the gray yeah. zone, doesn't think that they will actually invade. Because he right. doesn't there's, think they there, right. There's a difference of opinion. I've heard, 
you know, many well-informed people like Aaron Monte, yeah, say that they just don't, won't, and others are not so sure, think that they will. Um, yeah, you know, whether they, you know, the fact, though, is that they don't invade. Um, in the end, what do they accomplish? You know, they leave southern Lebanon in smoking ruins, and then they, and Hezbollah is still there, and he can't, um, and the, uh, the residents of northern Israel still can't return to their homes. You know, so again, you know, what do you, what do you say? You know, what what is Netanyahu going to point to? You know, where is his success? And then he also will fail to. Again, I think there's no question that he wants to bring Iran in and the U.S. He wants a war, a larger regional war. Um, maybe he's hoping that he can provoke something, you know, with these with these bombings. And maybe a response from Iran or some sort of, uh, you know, a much stronger response from Hezbollah that he could he could spin as, you know, um, as a real attack on Israel's threat to Israel's existence. And yeah. you can play the victim. Sorry, Hen Henrik is being at the door. I give me oh, okay. one second. Right. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'll just say again, Netanyahu's plan is to ignite a larger regional war. I mean, I, I, I think. There's no question about it. If you just look at the actions that the that the Israel is taking, they're deliberately over the last several months. They're deliberately provocative. You know, they aim to provoke some very strong reaction from Hezbollah and, and even more uh, from Iran. Um, and he's failed to to get that reaction. And now, you know, maybe what he's hoping that through this air campaign that he'll just, um, you know, that. By killing Nasrallah and 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 leveling half half of Beirut, Beirut and much of southern Lebanon, you know that he will finally get the reaction that he wants. But if that he may gets be true, that... he may just he may just continue to you know, yeah, to bomb Lebanon. There was I think it was back in two thousand and six, or maybe it was some other time that um, it that Israel threatened to bomb Lebanon back to the Stone Age. And this time he might really try to carry it out with the hope that it, you know, when he gets them in the process of bombing them back to the Stone Age, he'll finally get the reaction that he wants. And that, and that can lead to the larger regional war that he wants. But that's, that's a bit of a gamble though, as well, right? I yeah, mean, because of the, course. The, yeah. the, the more that you do this type of bombing the, to, to elicit a response, the more you start to bomb population centers, level, uh, cities and towns and villages it, it, it's and then there isn't a response and you keep on escalating you go higher further and further and tell you you know just destroy beirut and then finally there's a response from iran the, the idea that like oh my goodness this is an unprovoked attack israel has to defend itself is not going to fly with the world right i mean we can't what, what's happening right now in beirut the world is seeing it uh, and I think it's uh, people are kind of surprised about the amount of restraint that's been shown, well, for example, by yeah. Iran. Right. Um, a lot of people are, in fact, you know, on the the other side are disappointed. And they think that with Iran and and, um, and to a lesser extent with Hezbollah, they say that, you know, they, they feel like they're being weak. And, um, you know, I'm not going to judge them. This is a, they're in a very difficult position. And um, but that you get frustration on the other side, actually. If if this war, uh, it, will Netanyahu stay in power as long as this war continues? When Israel's well, that's state of his war? gamble. You know, that's his. He well, one thing he, he certainly has to continue the war um, to stay in power. Let's put it that way. Uh, his, uh, I think, both Smotrich and Ben Gavir have made it clear that if, for example, if he agrees to a ceasefire, they're out of there, and his coalition falls apart. And so that's he ceases to be president, um, and that's something he can't risk. So you know whether or not he wants to continue the war, or he, um, for reasons of his own, you know, uh, freedom and uh, his own career, he needs to continue the war.